Susan Gardner here for Municipal World. We're at the 2019 Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in beautiful Quebec City. Joining me in the Municipal World Media Centre is Dawn Chaplin from the town of Torbay. Welcome Dawn. Thank you Susan for the opportunity. Oh, I wanted to uh, uh, connect with you a little bit uh, to talk about um, you're the CEO for the town of uh, Torbay. Correct. How long have you had that role? It's 13 years. 13 years. It's, and it's, uh, it's still quite interesting. Torbay is second fastest growing municipality in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. So it presents a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges. So no day is ever the same. So, yeah. And uh, if I, I think for some people, uh, probably for you, yeah. uh, that's a that's a good thing. Yes, you, yeah. You know, it's a consistent yeah. challenge, right? Yes, yeah. And to me, I've prior to going to Torbay, I always worked in contract work. So, I guess for me, ultimately, I want to be able to make a difference, and that's that's why I've been with Torbay so long. When I was in previous work uh, opportunities, I felt I had reached my maximum potential. And I left of my own accord, so going to Torbay, uh, my undergrad degree is science actually, and so when I was hired, people, science, like, because typically CAOs are accountants or they're, or they're engineers, traditionally, and, but I come from a community economic development background, so I have a, a certificate program from the University of, of Waterloo mm -hmm. and um, and I'm a, a firm believer in lifelong learning too so when I went to Torbay I looked to opportunities for professional development so I had a I guess a list a, a, I'll call it a bucket list for lack of a better word but I had personal goals set for myself yes. and professional goals as well too so I have I have uh, reached those or like I said I'm still a lifelong learner so I still look for ways to identify and be able to give back to the organization because things are never stagnant I mean in working in a municipality legislation changes funding opportunities come available and so I mean like under the current gas tax agreement we have asset management uh, that has to become part of our daily processes so learning about about that as well too so and I'm still working through uh, the professional list yes. so where it's pretty exciting time in Torbay now we're uh, at substantial completion for a 10 million dollar uh, community center Wow and uh, so it'll have it'll be a gathering place for everybody in the community because there'll be a gymnasium a walking track three multi-purpose rooms splash pad inclusive playground green space and a skateboard park That's fantastic. so so we're, we're looking to that because of being second fastest growing our infrastructure hasn't kept up with the demands not the asks but the demands so trying to put proper plans in place to develop that infrastructure and also to because we are a community of you know based on residential taxation that makes it hard too because you can't tax people to the ends of the earth right so there's a limit and I think that's a challenge that all municipalities are Absolutely. going through that with property tax that uh, it's regressive and but it's the only means that we have at this point in time so Hopefully in the near future, governments will, will change that, even look into, you know, 1% of HST or 1% of, of income tax, right? So, yeah. So you, um, you mentioned your background in uh, community economic development. Yes. Yeah. Uh, economic development is, uh, we're seeing, uh, I think, a lot of uh, municipalities uh, hiring CAOs uh, yes. in recent years yes. with that uh, economic yeah. development yeah. background. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, that uh, experience, uh, your background in economic development, how it informs the work you do for Torbay. Well, it allows you to have a, a broader perspective, and that's the approach I've always taken about the harder, the hard and the soft side. So you've got your core infrastructure, your pipes in the ground, your roads, but there's also the quality of, of life too, which is the softer side. And then it, it, it originally started off as economic development, but it transitions because you have physical, you have historical heritage, you have social, you have fiscal, 
And uh, so you got to have a broader vision on, on when you approach any work in, uh, in the municipal government. And the big things for me is developing partnerships and uh, sustainability and having a plan. That's really so it gives you the roadmap on, on where you need on where you need to go. And that's always uh, you know, the approach I've taken is to is to have that have that broader vision. You can say you uh, you know you live in the town of Torbay, but I want people to say they come from the community of the town of Torbay. And community and town are two very different things. And so I'm very passionate, I'm I you know, quite committed and uh, I don't shut off at four o'clock, so I'm always thinking of when the work is done, how can we take it to the next level, and how can we be innovative, and do do things different, and not be not be afraid to to try something else. So you you mentioned that you know you, you don't turn off at four o'clock. Are you a little bit of a Type A personality? I would, would you say, Don. I would say so. I'm a firstborn, so um, and my dad traveled uh, quite a bit for his for his work. So when I was older and the responsibility of looking after my siblings, which was, which was all good because that set the roadmap for me as well too because my parents said, you can do anything that you put your mind to. So even when I applied in, in Torbay, and typically CAOs, it's been a male-dominated profession. Absolutely. But that never ever came into account for me. There's a movie, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield yes. in it. And he told his son, you're a melon, and that means you can do anything. My father says, don't forget, you're a chaplain on a melon, you can do anything. So that's always the approach, and that's the approach, uh, you know, I instill in my son, and in my, in my, in my staff as well, too. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to, to make a mistake, or if you're struggling with something, let's come have a conversation about it, and let's see how we can, if it goes off the rails, let's see how we can, we can put it back back on the rails so and I and the I, I reference a lot of you know words of wisdom that my dad has says to me because uh, you know treat people as you want to be treated because the same people uh, you meet on the way up is there yes can you see the them way, again on the on way, way down. down right absolutely and I mean and you know coming into Torbay Torbay is a very historical community and there's traditional surnames there so I struggled well I didn't I struggled with that a little bit because people came in and go, that you're not a chaplain, what do you know about Torbay? And I just explained to them about my education, my background, I'm committed and dedicated, and, and I'm real. Like I'm, I don't consider myself a false person. Again, back to treating people as they want to be treated. If residents come in, I make time to sit with them. They might not like the answer at the end of the day, but if you take the time to communicate to them and explain it to them, at least they'll appreciate that that even more. Building a relationship of trust yes. and uh, that's doing the, it in an that, authentic that's, way. That's so that's so important. And I mean, yes, we have an elected council, but we really have eight thousand bosses. That's the population of Torbay, because you know the council is an elected representative of of the greater community. So if they come in and ask a question, you know. No one should ever ask, well, what do they want that for? I mean, yes, you have legislation there and access to information that they could come in and file a form, but we're very open and accountable and transparent. We have a portal on our website that residents can sign up to receive notica notifications when the council packages are uh, put online, and they receive the same information as council receives. So, so there's an openness there yes. that... Uh, people can uh, can count on. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So uh, 13 years is uh, is a, a, an amazing amount of time yes, to be in yes, that, that yes, position. Yeah. Um, me, there are many CAOs that are, you know, kind of have that kind of longevity, but many, many more uh, that it, it's less. What do you, uh, uh, how do you maintain a, a great relationship, which you obviously must have with yes. your council? Like well, I, I with my mayor upon election, we sit down and we talk about communication, expectations of, of one another, and um, and we we communicate regularly. That's that's so important because I've worked with councils that the communication wasn't there, and I so I always kept trying to you know we need to talk we need to talk because the mayor is the. Uh, you know, the ceremonial head of, of the municipality, 
but council only has one employee, so, and, uh, and it's me. So I've really worked hard to keep the lines of communication open, and not every day is a rose, but if there's, you know, and I respect the process, so I will bring forth a recommendation, and once the decision is made, um, you know, that's where it ends for me. I'm not going to undermine council. I work side by side with them, and different perspectives. Sometimes, you know, you have your own your own thought process, but others bring a different perspective to it. Yeah. And maybe when making decisions or recommendations, you've you've never seen that. And uh, so you just have to be uh, accepting of, of diverse opinions. And, uh, and again, I guess my own personal philosophy is Torbay, because of its location, it borders the capital city of St. John, so it's five minutes from the airport, you know, 10 minutes from downtown, five minutes to the Trans-Canada Highway. So it's in a very strategic location, and it has so much potential not only from a community from, but from a staff perspective too. So I want to work with staff to help them grow and flourish too because I've been the worker bee in the trench and I can see how important that is to have someone there to you know mentor you and work with you, work with you side by side. So That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, as a, working as a woman in a traditionally male-dominated uh, profession, yeah. Uh, and I'd say, you know, across Canada, women are still, you know, far in the minority in yes, the yes. ranks of CAOs. Yeah. Um, have you faced any particular challenges that you think are, you know, unique to uh, the women's experience in that, uh, in that role? I, you probably get, you want to get treated differently because, you know, the, the class, the, the old boys club type thing, but I think you just keep pecking away at that too and once people get to know you and you establish yourself and they see the work that you can do and and the approach and not being afraid to ask them questions which I have gone out and, and, and done and um, as I mentioned my undergrad degree was uh, science so I wanted to get some education uh, to match uh, to match the experience and I mean I reached out to the CAO in Mount Pearl at the time Gerard Lewis larger municipality and uh, he, he provided me some advice guidance and he helped shape my professional development career. So I guess I'm, because of coming from economic development when you had to ask the questions and you had to build the plan and you had to go, you, sometimes you had to go into a room that you know people were tense and uptight and it's just all in, all in your approach too but I mean I have no hesitation with reaching out to larger municipalities and, and ask questions because at the end of the day we all have the same purpose to serve the residents and one thing I've learned through coming to national conferences it doesn't matter the size of the municipality we're all going through the same challenges it's just it's just the magnitude and I guess it goes back to as well how I was raised and so I've never seen that as a as an obstacle. I've never been afraid to, to walk into a room. I've actually grown and become more confident over, over the years. And, uh, actually, and I actually have people come ask me questions about things that we're doing in Torbay. So that's, that's the greatest form of, of flattery and satisfaction there as well, too. Absolutely yeah. it is. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your uh, insights, Dawn. Thank you very much, Susan, for the opportunity. And I would like to let you know that my council absolutely loves Municipal World. Oh. They all have their own subscription, and I have mine. And we and we're going to be we're doing some renovations now at the town hall, so I've acquired some of the books. So we're going to be developing a library oh, for soul. use. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> all right. I'm Susan Gardner for Municipal World with Don Chaplin from Town of Torbay. We share your stories.